Good morning. I was told to make a speech in English, but as soon as an absolute majority of the audience are Koreans, so I feel completely out of place, but I prepared a speech in English, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Well, welcome to the G20 Bridge Forum. Um, it's a chilly November morning. I, I hope you're enjoying it. And it seems that the absolutely beautiful season of autumn in Korea seems to be getting shorter and shorter and the winter longer. But um, if you dread an extended cold weather, a famous poet once said, the best way to shorten the winter is to borrow money due in spring. And I've tried it and it works, so just remember that. My name is Jung Wook Kong, a member of the Korean National Assembly and honorary ambassador for uh, foreign aid in Korea. Let me begin by expressing my gratitude to the gracious hosts and all the distinguished guests gathered here today to discuss multilateral economic development assistance or uh, cooperation. Well, in his essay on goodness, Francis Bacon Sr., the renowned philosopher, once said, the desire of power in excess caused angels to fall and the desire of, of knowledge in excess caused man to fail. But there is, in charity, there is no excess, and neither can man uh, nor angel come in danger by it. Let me rephrase it this way. In international cooperation, there is no excess, and neither a country uh, nor uh, people come in danger by it. International cooperation is neither simple charity nor bestowing a favor. To use a cliché, the entire world is in the same boat. And international cooperation is a form of investment in the future by which the world fights its way through raging billows. Sewing holes in the sails, repairing the bitten of deck, and fixing the broken rudder together in the face of a storm. These are the essence of international cooperation. That is why we call grants of cash and resources from advanced nations to developing nations international cooperation and not just charity. We use the term not because we want to sound euphemistic so the recipient nations can feel better about themselves, but rather because international cooperation actually serves to help the world's nations coexist and prosper by building on each other's strength. However, everyone, at least here, understands that international cooperation is much easier said than done. It is because almost, although most people recognize it as a means for mankind to survive and prosper, they still see it as a mere charity. It is also why countries that carry out such endeavors have difficulties obtaining robust internal support. Let me take Korea as an example. According to a public survey taken in year 2005, close to 62% of the respondents said they agreed to the necessity of Official Development Assistance, or ODA. With regard to the amount of ODA, 48% of the respondents said that it should be increased, and only 13% said it should be cut back. However, we had very different results three years later in August 2008. About 53 percent of the respondents said uh, the amount of ODA should remain at the current level as compared to 36 percent in 2005, while 28 percent said ODA should actually be reduced as compared to 13 percent three years before. Now, many of those who had previously supported an increase in ODA have begun to call for a decrease in 2008. What well, can explain this? The primary reason was the deterioration in economic conditions in 2008 as compared to 2005. The global economic crisis was a great shock to the Korean economy, and many Koreans at home felt that there were so many people to help out here, why should we care about others abroad? In other words, Korean people continue to see international cooperation as a charitable practice performed only when it could be afforded. The Korean government recently announced that it would increase its ODA from 0.1% uh, 
uh, to, of GNI to 0.25%, 2.5 times increase by 2015. And I have no doubt, no doubt that the Korean government will keep its word. However, in order to deliver on this promise and engage beyond year 2015, the government needs to make greater efforts to, to imprint upon the minds of Korean people that the need for international cooperation. International cooperation carried out without the consensus of the general public is like, say, a house of cards. It will perish and you can quit any time. So what can a government do to build a strong social and political consensus on international cooperation? The first, I think, is self-evident, which is public relations and education. It is to put greater efforts into helping the people understand that international cooperation is not just a charity. The public should recognize that it is not a practice we can give up or quit depending on economic conditions. Building a socio-political consensus is a problem limited not just to Korea. Many countries that intend to engage in international cooperation often face difficulty making people fully understand why they should care in the face of domestic problems. This is especially evident in countries trying hard to join the ranks of advanced nations with a crowded domestic agenda. When an economic crisis hits such countries, then of course international cooperation will move further down the priority list. Moreover, there are some countries that continue to regard international cooperation as primarily as a means to secure natural resources or protect their national interests rather than an investment in the future. These countries often demand underground resources or economic and, economic and diplomatic outcomes in exchange for economic cooperation. Such nations also tend to take a passive view uh, toward international cooperation, particularly when an economic condition deteriorates. If such a mindset is prevalent in your country, then it will not be easy to build a society-wide consensus on foreign aid. In this regard, Ireland offers an excellent example. The Irish government has made strenuous efforts to promote international cooperation by continuously providing education to the public through NGOs and making relevant information transparently available at all times to the public. As a result, public support for foreign aid in Ireland remains at over 90%. And even in the 80s and 90s, when its economy was under a lot of pressure, Ireland remained unwavering its, in its commitment to international cooperation. And on the strength of its efforts, Ireland's international aid program was recently rated one of the best in the world by the Brookings Institute. Despite the unfavorable, unfavorable external environment, its continued communication and education helped solidify public support resulting in uh, sustained achievements in international cooperation. Now, apart from public relations and education, secondly, to secure widespread internal support, we need to maximize opportunities for the public to directly engage in international cooperation initiatives. International cooperation is often understood as purely intergovernmental activity and this perception leads people to believe that it really has not much to do with, with their daily lives and future. Therefore, we must reduce the remoteness or abstractness associated with international cooperation by installing a perception that the taxes people pay are turned into bread and books for the world's poorest children, and providing many nations with an opportunity to stand on their feet. If possible, we should encourage to people to make direct donations or participate in NGOs. It is also necessary to extend opportunities for people to pursue volunteer work abroad. The public sector should promote proactive campaigns 
to raise awareness that international cooperation is not just an abstract phenomenon that happens between governments, but a bridge that directly links the common people from a donor nation to the common people of a recipient nation. In this light, the Netherlands also highlights a very important example. About one-third of the entire nation, one-third of the Dutch, or more than five million citizens, are directly involved in development cooperation projects. And more than half of the population gives donations, takes part in fundraising campaigns, and works at relevant NGOs. More than half. That's a staggering number. The Netherlands has committed uh, to giving at least 0.8% of GNI to as, as ODA and ranks among the top donors in the world. Such a high level of ODA is possible only because there's a strong consensus of support among the public as they're directly engaged in international cooperation initiatives. The U.S. Peace Corps, the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, or JICA, or the Korea, uh, Korea International Cooperation Agency, or COICA, are also excellent examples of agencies geared toward engaging citizens directly in volunteer activities and garnering uh, public support. Each year, for example, Korea sends out 4,000 uh, volunteers, including 1,800 from COICA, to developing nations under the banner of World Friends Korea. This number of dispatched uh, volunteers is expected to reach 20,000 within the next five years, and I have no doubt that these people will serve as the most effective and active ambassadors of goodwill for international cooperation and volunteerism. Lastly, through international cooperation, a donor country, intended or not, will leave a lasting impression on, on a recipient nation. Therefore, experts and observers have uh, increasingly begun to call for a branded and specialized initiative to maximize the effectiveness of international cooperation and leave a lasting uh, positive impression on a recipient nation. Austria is a great case in point. Austria's ODA is less than that of many nations, uh, but it has contributed to international cooperation through specialized ODA. Leveraging its expertise in organic farming, now it has gained a reputation among the recipient nations as an excellent agricultural and farming partner. Such specialization has also helped Austria reconcile the development agenda with concerns of environmental destruction. Now Spain, another case in point, has focused on international cooperation uh, in cultural development by taking advantage of its cultural, historical, and linguistic affinity to Latin America. Korea also has undergone, as you know, one of the most dynamic transformations in the 20th century, from economic devastation to prosperity, from a recipient nation to a donor country. For this reason, for this reason uh, the nation is uniquely positioned to serve as a remarkable example of fast growth within the short time frame. Therefore, we are undertaking efforts to share our development experience and know-how through promoting our rural rehabilitation initiatives called the New Village Mov Movement. These uh, specialization efforts are necessary not only to enhance a nation's image, but to increase the public support because the questions of what types of aid we provide and how and where we should mobilize aid resources may be answered in the process. Specialization can also help define the abstract concept of international cooperation by helping people identify with much familiar notion of, of, uh, of socioeconomic development. Now, in conclusion, at the G20 Seoul Summit, the leaders from 20 countries of varied regional representation and economic status will gather here to discuss the global economy's state of affairs. That is why it is an ideal platform to address many challenges facing 
the realm of international cooperation. It is an important opportunity to ascertain that international cooperation is not just bestowing a favor on a particular nation, but a means of working together for the future of the world. Therefore, the summit needs to formulate clear and concise messages that can be imprinted on the minds of the world's citizens and therefore to garner their support. Well, let me reiterate what I've said in the beginning. In international cooperation, there is no excess and neither can a country nor people come in danger by it. In short, it must be continued and expanded. It is always time to do more and it is especially time to engage more and help out more. And to that end, we must join in the effort to garner the public's widespread support that will always serve as the strong backbone of unwavering commitments to international cooperation. Thank you very much for listening.